Are you all members of ACA? Oh, yes. I'm not getting it loud and clear. Are you all members of ACA? Oh, yes. So we said. We are the people of our society. Mr. Chairman. Ah, Mr. Ibrahim also, who is close on the program coordinator. Uh, the education specialist, World Child Canada. Uh, other members of the high table. And the dancers who are at the back trying to redress to come and join us again. Fellow students. Because I myself am a continuing student. Forever I'm learning. <laughs> and the teachers present. Good morning. I stand here as the guest speaker. And I did scribble down a few words of motivation. I say motivation because those of us who are leaders now, I say leaders now who are young adults because in the youth category we have subcategories we have the adults we have the young adults we have the teenagers most of you are in that category and we have the psychological youth those who are above the biological age bracket 35 but empathize they feel for they see your conditions and try to improve them. They are called psychological youths. So that is why we are here, to motivate the teenagers, those of us who are presently the leaders. And I always say those who are in their teens are the future leaders. And those of us who are adults, young adults, we are leaders now, as you can see from what is currently uh, been done by officials of ACA. And I normally have a motivational statement I give to students, youths, that I normally talk to, that I normally inspire. And it goes like this. When I say future leaders, you all say leaders of tomorrow. And I will say likewise, and you say future leaders, right? In a very pump and pungent way. Very, 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 very loud that I mean. Future leaders? Leaders of tomorrow. Oh my God, we are leaders now, that is why. Tell me that you are leaders of tomorrow. Future leaders? Leaders of tomorrow. Leaders of tomorrow? Future leaders. Wonderful, that's what you are, and that is why we are here. ACAD is creating the requisite platform for you to be real leaders. And now you are future leaders, we are leaders, and you are taken from our footsteps. And what is required is the basic platform, and this is one of such. Where you can have the basic information, the information about your country that will instill patriotism. A couple of weeks, I was also motivating students who are part of the SOA leadership. I know a few of them are here, the SWAT leadership. And it's also an initiative to transform young teenagers, young youths in Sierra Leone, to be real leaders. I have, like I mentioned, a leaflet here that I scribble. And I'm going through it, and I share with you as a guest speaker what I have to motivate you. As I mentioned by the geographical analyst who gave the geographical history as well as our past of Sierra Leone, it tells us that Sierra Leone comprises of about 16 ethnic groups. Why am I starting with the ethnic groups? Because the topic, the theme is what? Our history, our culture, our brain truth. Imbibing, practicing, upholding our history and our culture will virtually enhance a great truth for us as a nation, individuals, collective groups of persons. And knowing that we have about ethnic, uh, 16 ethnic groups, which I believe in one of the teachings you will have detailed explanation about them, 
there is great similarity among these ethnic groups that we have. And this makes Sierra Leone to uphold what we call a unity in diversity. And now let me just define history briefly. Just put simply and in my own words, history is knowledge. We know what knowledge is, right? Beliefs, practices, the things we do every day, the things we believe in, of society, or the trends in society, as well as the happenings that are now taking place, the things we see, and also understanding the present trends, things that are happening to us, is also part of history, which will enable us to map out meaningful strategies in the future. Knowing your past, understanding the present, will help you map out meaningful strategies for the future. That is how I define history. And with this, which we always say, our story, because one of the tutors, who is the big chief of Bauri, normally says his story, that is the story written by the Europeans. So we begin to say, our story. That is, you make it yourself. You believe in it. So history, quote unquote, our story, will enable us to see ourselves as one. And history, our story, and culture are symbols of peace, pride, unity, progress, and sustainable development. Let's look at a simple definition of culture, because I really want to go with the title there and look as the theme, our history, our culture. Put simply, culture is a way of life. What we are doing is a way of life. And the way of life could either be bad or good, negative or positive. And we have several examples of negative ways of life. Violence, hooliganism, these are negative, just to name but a few. The positive, respect, obedience. Listening attentively is also part of what? Positive ways of life. Let me just quote from a renowned cultural expert, and that is Charlie Afna. I always quote his definition of culture. Charlie Afna says, culture is everything that happens in the world, in our surrounding. Being an accountant, working in a social work place like Akron is doing, is a way of life. Being a doctor is a way of life. A teacher, a student is a way of life. You can either pursue a negative way of life or a positive way of life. And that is why we are here, to teach you the negative and the positive. And to goad you, to stimulate you towards practicing the positive. Like I mentioned, culture is negative and positive. History as well. There have been negative happenings in the past. And negative things are also going on. Why at the same time positive things are as well happening? So we will try and strive to uphold the positive aspect of our culture and our history. There's another definition of culture again by T.B. Tyler. And I'll just paraphrase, what am I paraphrase to summarize what he says? He says culture is a comprehensive whole. That is a whole, so big. And it includes what? It includes beliefs, practices, tradition, norms, values. We all know what are values, things you also do. Norms, things you do normally. You have to wash every day. You have to clean your teeth, right? You have to put on nice clothes. These are normal things. That's what we call them norms. If you fail to wash your body for a couple of days, then people will say, well, this man is somehow abnormal. So that is the norms. But the opposite trend is abnormal, which is also happening. We have morals, things that are moral. And the opposite is immoral. It's also part of a culture. So we need to know the positive aspect. That's what Ibitayo says. And it also says practices, traditions, the things we do every day. Things that are handed down from generation to generation to us. Some are negative, like the chairperson, the first Ghanaian chairperson mentioned. There are trends that our forefathers have gone through, which are negative, some are positive. So we strive to learn from the successes and 
and positive aspect of our forefathers. And he also says, culture is also every capability and ability of individual. Whatever thing you are capable of doing and the ability you have is a culture. So you see, it's a comprehensive rule. It's everything, like Charlie Lama says. And let me take this time now to just highlight a few aspects of our history and maybe consciously carve out the negative and the positive. Like was mentioned by uh, Mr. Ibrahim, he talked about slavery. And slavery is one trend which we should not forget. And I also synchronize them to our recent past history, which is also our culture, because our history is our culture. Are you all members of ACA? Oh, yes. So we say? Creativity for a society. Future leaders? Leaders of tomorrow. Leaders of tomorrow? Future leaders. Wonderful. Now we mentioned slavery and we looked at the impact it had. From slavery we had what, what is called colonialism. And one thing we have to observe, there are three aspects. Governance. The people and economy. Those are the things normally surrounding us as inhabitants of a country. And let's look at governance because the background of everything is governance. Colonialism came in and we saw the colonial masters. There was what? The legislative and executive council which was the means of governance and after which we had independence. There is a lecture for it and independence also a type of governance. There is also a critique which states that that is a negative aspect, there is a positive. Those who upheld the value of Africa unity, the unity of West Africa, the unity of countries. There are others again who said no, we are going to stand alone. And we saw what we call old wine in new bottles in our forefathers. And the governance system extended to the point where we saw what we call personal vendetta, the creeping of our emotions. What are these emotions? Selfishness, greed, anger, passion. That's this my brother. Because he has fallen short of a law, I have to back him. Even if he is wrong, or even if she is wrong, these are all passion. You are too passionate. So all of these emotions crept in gradually, and we saw the prevalence of like the aspect of governance, bad governance. The economy. We saw also a gradual trend. Colonial economy was a means of what we call siphon. I will use one word. Africa, especially West Coast of Africa, where we find Sierra Leone, there was a name for the type of colony. It was called exploitative colonies or exploited states colonies. You have colonies of contest. You know, people contest for certain colonies like East Africa. And you have colonies of exploitation. That's like Sierra Leone, the Congo, hmm? where most of the resources, like the geographer was saying, all of the unique and the wealth of natural endowment we had, we are taking to other countries. It was merely exploitative economy. So that type of a mindset of a colony of Sierra Leone and most other countries in the sub-region, the culture of exploitation started. That's just a negative aspect. I'm trying to. That is a way of life which prevailed and it existed. That is why we noticed a one-way track railway system right from the produce area in Sulima or those Matru to the port. And it fade off. Gradually now we have no railway system. Look at the road network. The economy was so close. So that's also another aspect of governance. And it had a negative impact on Sierra Leone. The governance system, because of those manifestations, what happened? It turned out to create what we call bad governance. And eventually, violence crept in. Because in bad governance, the education you are enjoying, there was a time when our forefathers, it's not a finger pointing, but to make clear the issues. That is your history and your culture. There was free education. But now, it has, it's, not, it's not free anymore. And those who had that had the opportunity to really educate themselves. So that's just the background 
explaining this aspect of governance. And our recent past, we saw what happened. Most of you were kids, and most of you were unborn. Out of greed, out of selfishness, like I mentioned, the emotions, we had our war. And when considering our history, we cannot talk our history without mentioning the influence of the war. Now we move down to my theme. My theme is very short, and I'll just summarize this aspect and to instill in you the positive values of our history and our culture. It's uphold positive historical cultural values, empower the youth, invest in the future. How do we help to empower the youth? At this point, it is vital that I mention that we must take advantage of several things that makes us one, that makes us realize we have a broad national culture. And what we have to do is to have adequate knowledge, understanding, and the appreciation of this history and culture. Thus, it will instill in the minds of you youngsters, Sierra Leoneans, a sense of patriotism and positively influence your actions, our actions and interactions. It will also increase the sense of commitment, determination and proactiveness, which is a prerequisite for us to enhance breakthrough. It is vital to mention that the structures are now set. And what are these structures? which we must take advantage of. We have the Agenda for Change, the Attitudinal and Behavioral Change, the Commission for Anti-Corruption, the Public Sector Reform Unit, the Youth Commission, to name but this few, are all forum through which we can express and enhance a breakthrough. You need to know about them. These are commissions, these are natural trends, emerging trends that we must take advantage of. And to finally summarize, we have a statement by June Robinson, Director of British Council. She mentioned that Sierra Leone and the culture and history we have is what we are. And this gives us the opportunity to know our local environment and to learn consciously from our ancestors. Culture and history defines who we are. It also defines what others see in us. That's what Julie Robinson says. And at this point, I want to share suggested ways to enhance our history, our culture, our breakthrough. Through a short toolkit. What do I mean by a toolkit? It's a model that can really explain to you how best you can positively transform yourself and transform your country through your history. It is called a suggestion and auto suggestion. Always try to suggest the positive. What I'm saying is suggestion. And normally, from what I say, you auto suggest. So always try to say the positive to your colleague, like we say, you are leaders. You are future leaders. You also say you are leaders of tomorrow because you have it in you. And also the positive suggestion. Ask the new what? Are you all members of APAD? Oh, yes. So we say creativity for an society. So that's again a positive suggestion, which is a solution for us to have a breakthrough. The last one is what? The productive mindset. What do I mean? by productive mindset. You have to be questioning issues, you have to be tolerant, you tolerate yourselves, and eradicate the culture of violence. You have to be innovative, and have to be productive. To conclude, all of the above will always enhance a breakthrough if we be good leaders. And being good leaders, the following must be of help and practice. One, integrity. Two, self-belief. Three, self-respect. Four, respect for others and the environment. Five, positive thinking. Six, contribution. 
and service to others. In addition to this, do not take personal things into your work, like we are now doing when you will be into your work. You should be result oriented in a positive way. Follow set rules that is you have to be found. You have to uh, uh, maintain what we call perseverance. You have to tolerate yourself. You should lack what we call hate. Don't feel or look too good or talk too wise about yourself or about arrogance. Think and do not make thoughts your aim. What do I mean by that? Think of how you will contribute to Masalo. But don't begin to allow the thoughts of going to overseas or to go to another place for being a pasture to overcome you. You will miss your target. So think and do not allow thoughts to be your aim. Be honest. Fear. Don't tell lies. Be confident. Trust yourself when others distrust you. Be organized and inspirational. Thank you for your audience. Uh, can we clap more than that? Uh, this lecture is worth clapping for. You have not clapped yet. Can you clap in? You know, people pay for this thing and they, they give them funds, counterfeit. 